All right. So a question that I get from a lot of people on YouTube and a lot of people that I see in my clinical practice of over 16 years now is what the heck is going on with my high levels of vitamin B12? Now, if you haven't already seen my videos on why the normal range for vitamin B12 is stupid, then now would be a great time to smash that subscribe button and check out my other videos that, as well as a deep dive into the functional genetic factors that affect B12 absorption, transportation, and metabolism, we talk a lot about low B12 and uh, B12 insufficiencies or deficiencies. We already know that B12 levels uh, and in inappropriate B12 levels can really screw with your energy levels motivation, libido, sex drive, memory, focus, and concentration, amongst other symptoms that are often related to or associated with burnout um, and hormonal imbalances like low testosterone for men and low estrogen for women. Now, these videos on my channel will teach you everything you need to know about testing B12, when and how to test, and how to interpret your test results for when your doctor doesn't really know anything about diet or nutrition or functional genetics and precision medicine. In this video today, though, what I want to do is address the other side of the coin when it comes to vitamin B12. What do we do or how do we think about things when your B12 levels are high? Now, when I'm saying high, I'm talking about elevated B12 levels outside the normal range that are occurring in the absence of supplementation. So you're not taking B12 supplements. You've double and triple and quadruple checked all your supplements to make sure there's no B12 in them. You're not consuming any foods that are supplemented with B12 in excess, like nutritional yeast, or even dairy products, and you're not excessively consuming animal meats either. Um, and of course, you're not getting any B12 injections, or you haven't in a while. Supplementing or injecting vitamin B12 uh, typically takes at least a five-week washout to be confident that they're not affecting or directly impacting those blood test results. And a five-week washout likely will therefore give you a clear baseline level for your B12. Now, remember, as I've said in a lot of other videos, though, the bigger question around, in this case, vitamin B12 is, do your blood levels actually reflect what is bioavailable or usable by your cells? What's in your blood doesn't necessarily uh, reflect what's accessible or usable at the tissue or at the cellular level. And here's the really fun part when we're talking about B12. And by fun, I mean really kind of screwed up. Um, but high B12 levels or hypercobalaminemia is super under underrespected. It's super underestimated by 99% of doctors. And what's worse is that paradoxically high B12 levels can be associated with symptoms that mirror B12 deficiency or insufficiency. Um, and so you're getting these high levels of B12 when you would expect very low levels um, because of the symptoms that you're having. For instance, in this peer-reviewed article, they actually talk about how high B12 levels, when associated with low B12 types of symptoms, that often represents poor tissue transportation and utilization of B12 at the cellular level. And again, we talk about all of this in my last B12 video on the genetics of vitamin B12. Now, if you're watching this video, you're probably wondering uh, or worrying maybe uh, because you've had blood tests done recently and you had your B12 tested and we're probably expecting a very low level, or maybe if you've been watching my videos at all, a low normal B12 result. And instead, you got skyrocketing high levels of B12. And I get it. Uh, seeing abnormalities in your blood work is always really scary. It can cause a lot of stress. Um, I look at blood work all day, and I work with people who get really stressed out about their health and their blood work. Um, so, um, and yet, even in my own blood, blood work, when I see anything flagged, that you know still makes my heart skip a beat. Now in Canada and in most of the world, uh, our units for vitamin B12 testing are in picomoles per liter. And our expected normal range is about 150 to 650 picomoles per liter. That's the normal expected range. I have found in my clinical experience that most people feel their best when B12 levels are maintained above the 500 picomole per liter range. This tracks with countries that are more progressive in thinking about defining blood levels from a perspective of optimization rather than just being not sick. Uh, Japan, for instance, where their normal value for B12 um, starts at about 500 picomoles per liter and goes all the way up to 1300 milli uh, picomoles per liter. Now for you US folks who measure in picograms per milliliter, the stated normal range uh, is about 200 to 800 uh, picograms per milliliter, depending on your source. Uh, and that 500 minimum uh, for optimal levels in those picomoles per liter if we convert that to US units, that's about 677 picograms per milliliter. So that's sort of the upper limit. 
For the purposes of our discussion about high B12 levels today, though, what I'm going to say is that we're looking at people who have quite high levels of B12, so over 1,000 picomoles per liter or over 800 picograms per liter if you're in the U.S. People who are not supplementing have not had an injection of B12 recently, and yet they feel tired or fatigued. They've got low libido, low motivation, maybe anxiety or lower mood, depressive uh, feelings even, uh, poor focus and concentration, and generally just feel like they're dredging through life on a daily basis. And, you know, there are some serious shit that we need to be able to rule out if your B12 levels are high for seemingly no reason. Um, so there are some cancers, particularly myoproliferative cancers, bone marrow cancers. There are some solid cancers, liver and kidney disease, for instance. These things do need to be ruled out. And so you should definitely be following up with your doctor and ensuring a comprehensive set of blood work and physical examination with appropriate medical history to be undertaken. That's the shitty stuff. Make sure you're speaking with a healthcare provider when you're looking at high levels of B12 to rule out other reasons why it might be high. Personally, in my practice, I would want to see a complete blood count or a CBC. That's a blood test. Uh, that's sometimes also known as a hematology panel. Um, I'd probably want to see an iron panel looking at serum iron and saturation levels, your ferritin levels, um, liver enzymes and kidney function tests at the very least. Those are some of the blood tests that I would want to see alongside vitamin B12 test, uh, test results. But the other assessments that doctors aren't talking nearly about uh, enough yet are functional genetic tests that include the SNPs or the single nucleotide polymorphisms that I talk about in my B12 genetics video. In addition to this, to assess bioavailability and utilization or the proper metabolism of B12 at the cellular level, I really strongly recommend testing MMA or methylmalonic acid as well as homocysteine. Um, again, more tests to go alongside your B12 levels and to help understand what's actually going on in the entirety of the system relative to B12. So putting everything together that we've talked about, number one, paradoxically high vitamin B12 test results in the absence of supplementation or injection when we have symptoms that are expected to be uh, due to low B12 levels is a super common, super commonly misunderstood um, situation. And this misunderstanding is preventing doctors from helping people like you overcome fatigue, brain fog, anxiety, or even ADHD-like symptoms and low sex drive and libido. Number two, ruling out serious conditions that can be associated with B12, uh, high B12 levels is really important. So don't ignore your high levels of vitamin B12. Number three, testing MMA and homocysteine is probably a really good idea to determine if your B12 levels are sufficient for your body's requirement. And I would add a fourth piece here as well, the functional genetic testing that we've spoken about in other videos. This is how you can really understand when and where your B12 levels are appropriate to look at and understand what they mean for your situation. So again, for a deep dive on the genetics of B12 or, uh, or to why the normal range for vitamin B12 is stupid to begin with, check out my other videos. If you want to be notified when I put out more content that'll help you understand how your brain and body are designed to function at their best, then definitely hit that subscribe button. I'm Dr. J. I'll see you guys next time.